evening. I'm Joe Glover. And I'm Rich Fisher. Here's our top story tonight. A special eyewitness news investigation reveals the North Sharon Baptist Church child molesting scandal appears to be part of a pattern of such cases in churches that follow the teachings of a very controversial fundamentalist preacher. The North Sharon Baptist Church continues to have close ties to Jack Hiles, a nationally prominent fundamentalist who has been described by some ex-followers as a cult leader. TV2 investigator Vince Wade is here to tell us more in a special report called Praying from the Pulpit. Vince? Well, Rich, Jack Hiles isn't as familiar to the public the way Jerry Falwell is, but among fundamentalists, he's admired and even revered. Several Detroit area churches have invited Hiles in for sermons. Those churches are in Pontiac, Rochester Hills, Port Huron, Belleville, Flint, and the North Sharon Baptist Church near Jackson. Now, that's not to say that there's a sex scandal in these churches. But they've heard the gospel preached by a man who's been accused of financial improprieties and a decades-long extramarital affair. The facts show Hiles and pastors like him have a low regard for women. God made women the loveliest creatures on the face of the earth. Now tonight, Jack Hiles may think women are lovely creatures, but they aren't treated very well in his ministry, nor by pastors who subscribe to his views. Hiles presides over the First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana, just outside Chicago. Each year, he hosts a pastor's school for preachers from all over America. In 1981, he preached a sermon to his fellow pastors about how young girls' bodies were like the Holy Temple. He put a young girl named Arlene on display beside him as a visual aid for hundreds of other preachers as he thundered about the high priest entering the Holy Temple. This is a preacher who's used his pulpit to defend one of his deacons convicted of molesting a seven-year-old girl. Arlene, you're, you're very touchable. A young man, and I'm too old to even see you. But I could see why... A hundred young men want to touch her, couldn't you? At the nearby Hiles Anderson Bible College, sex is always on a student's mind because the faculty is always reminding them of the potential for sin. You are not supposed to touch the opposite sex at all until you're married. I think it would be very um, radical to the average American woman. To understand what former student Gwen Kafitz means, listen to a dress code lecture given to new co-eds at Hiles Anderson College. Any printing that goes, or anything that goes right across the bus line can't be worn. You've got to look there to read it. That's where the letters are. But it was mentioned that you should wear band-aids um, over your, in your pulpit if you were... Um, Had a large chest. Yes. <laughs> and I don't mean to be grosser than you might want to even put band-aids in a certain place. If you know what I mean, because... Women at Hiles Anderson College are admonished to wear T-shirts under opaque blouses so bra straps don't show, and not to wear large earrings because that's what harlots wear. No, I don't Every Sunday when Hiles preaches to his congregation, this man of God has reminders on either side of him that he's a man of the world. On his right in the choir is his wife, Beverly. On his left is his reputed mistress, Jenny Nishik Corley. She's the ex-wife of one of Hiles' former deacons. The two women have ignored each other for years. The great fundamentalist who's often invited to preach in Michigan churches has all but ignored the stain on his ministry and people's lives left by the philandering of his son, David Hiles. The younger Hiles had been the pastor of the Miller Road Baptist Church in Garland, Texas, until a janitor found photos of David Hiles having sex with a deacon's daughter. David's ex-wife Paula later confided in another pastor about her then-husband's illicit affairs with women in the Texas congregation. She didn't know he was taping the call. All these women in our church thought they were the one and only. And when they came out that there were 14 or 15 of them, we got had a... War going on there. Devil. Jack Hiles ignored his son's adultery until a Christian on the lookout for sin found photos of David's second wife in some porn and swinger magazines. Brenda Hiles' holy temple was on display in a variety of explicit poses in magazines like Adam and Chicago Swingers. The photos were accompanied by ads seeking men, ladies, or couples for group sex. Dave Prolick went to Hiles Anderson College with Brenda. Dave, the moment. You see her face, you'll know, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that that is in fact Brenda. You've seen the... Well, this Michigan businessman, we'll call him Fred, knows Dave and Brenda Hiles well. That's Brenda Hiles. Yep. I feel, I feel badly for her. I think she's been used in the worst, worst kind of way. Jack Hiles was forced to face the bare facts from the pulpit when Sherrillville, Indiana, attorney Boyle Glover, a former Hiles follower, put the photos on a flyer and led a Hiles loyalist to believe they'd be distributed at Hiles' 1991 pastor school. 
I was totally shocked. I could not believe the sin the board committed. They're going to walk up and try to hand you something. I'd prefer you wouldn't look at it. It is absolutely the most revolting, disgusting thing you've ever seen in your life, but it's true. My wife would leave on weekends. And this man says his former wife was used by David and Brenda Hiles in their group sex capades. It destroyed his marriage and his ex-wife's life. My wife became intimately involved with both David and Brenda and numerous other men in the church that Dr. Hiles had endorsed as being uh, spiritually astute people. A number of people, because I know them personally, I went to Dr. Hiles about the actions of his son, and uh, for whatever reason, he failed to act. He failed to restrain his son. Jack Hiles, who has used his pulpit several times to vigorously defend one of his deacons convicted in March of child molesting, has responded to our story by telling a Munster, Indiana newspaper that convicted child molesters should get the death penalty. Apparently, Hiles has changed his mind about his deacon, who faces sentencing on June the 10th. Rich. It's one of the followers of Hiles saying about all this, if anything. Well, they're in the dark about it for the most part because Hiles has conditioned them through mind control and brainwashing over the years not to listen to anything bad, uh, that he's always for the accused, never the accuser, and you shouldn't listen to any bad reports, as he calls them. All of this, as critics say, is a recipe for cover-up, and so uh, a lot of them are just totally ignorant of this and will be shocked if they saw it. More tomorrow. More tomorrow night. All right, thanks.